Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Well, the moment will happen this very hour. The total solar eclipse when the moon moves between the Earth and the sun, blocking the sun's light. We'll bring you the eclipse as it happens and travels over eastern Ontario. We'll take you to Niagara. We'll take you to Cleveland, Ohio. Lots of coverage this hour. And we're asking you, are you excited about today's solar eclipse? What's the most memorable sky event you've witnessed? I'm Michelle Elliott. Welcome to BC Today. Thank you for joining us on CBC Radio 1, CBC Television, and live streaming on the CBC News app, cbc.ca slash bc, and on the CBC Vancouver YouTube page. And you can call us now on our top story. Are you excited about today's solar eclipse? What have you got planned this hour? And what is the most memorable sky event you have experienced? You can call us 1-800-825-5950, 604-669-3733. You can hit pound 690 on your cell phone. By email, it's bctoday at cbc.ca. You can also text us at 236-330-2623. And so here's how the next hour will unfold. The total solar eclipse will be entering Canada in about uh, five, just over five minutes from now at 12.13. And starting in Niagara Falls, there will be a to moment of totality starting at 12.18. We'll take you there uh, live as that happens. Now here in the West, a partial solar eclipse has traveled over since 10.43 this morning. Of course... Viewing it has been contingent on the weather and it has been overcast and rainy. Well, the H.R. McMillan Space Centre held a viewing event this morning and CBC Radio Canada's Benoit Faradini is there now. Hello, Benoit. Hello, Michelle. I love that uh, astronaut suit that you're standing beside. I have pictures of my kids because you can go in there and pose for photos. And I have pictures of my kids posing right in there with their smiling faces looking through that glass helmet. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. So, so what happened this morning? So this morning, there was actually some uh, viewings here of the uh, NASA special show. There's two auditoriums that were open to the public here at the Space Center. Um, usually there is an observatory, there is a telescope as well, but right. today they are closed uh, because of the, uh, of the clouds. Ah. We cannot see anything. Even the telescope was equipped with uh, uh, a special solar filter. So instead, instead uh, the Space Center opened its doors and you had uh, more than 300 people actually today who came wow. and uh, watched uh, the show from 10.30 to now. It's still going on, of course. And they saw the, the first uh, eclipse uh, as uh, it was you know, starting to be uh, visible around uh, Mexico. So that's what people were doing today here. Oh, that was an amazing moment. Just about a, an hour and a half ago, you know, I watched it over TV and seeing people in Mexico, right? The, the sun, first of all, just, just diminishing into a very small sliver of light. And then the people there, the shots of people there, just the crowds, you know, all wearing their glasses, heads turned up. I mean, what a moment it was. What was it like there with the 300 people? Well, we, we heard some people in the public, of course, uh, being amazed uh, at this. There was a lot of children here. Ah. So it was mostly parents taking a day to bring their kids and, and you could <laughs> see the excitation, uh, mostly the parents actually, because some children didn't understand anything. Uh, I, uh, I talked to eight years old who knew exactly what was going on and explained to me yeah. how the uh, earth, uh, the moon and the sun were aligned. He, he knew it better than me. I was very <laughs> uh, impressed. So you have some people who have some knowledge and you have some people who just come here to build an interest. And that's, that I met a lot of parents who were bringing their kids here. So they were expecting them to, to learn more about 
solar system, stars, and, and to have more questions in, in the future. Uh, yes, it's about getting them interested, right? Peaking that interest already. I've taken my kids there, as I mentioned, for sure. We've looked through that telescope and seen even Venus, which was amazing. Mm. So to get to say that you, you've gone there at least to be able to see the solar eclipse, um, what a, a, a lifetime event. And so I'm sure the staff there are even more excited and know even more, perhaps more than the eight-year-old Benoit. <laughs> what, what are they telling you about why this oh, is special? <laughs> It's interesting because I just talked to uh, to some members of the staff and they were telling me that an event like today at the Space Center in Vancouver uh, does all the work for them actually because it builds interest uh, in the parents, in the mm. kids as well. So it actually uh, educates people about space, about stars, and they hope to see them again here at the Space Center. And on a day not like today, uh, without any clouds, you can actually, like you said, like you did, um, peek at the telescope and see the stars, see other planets. Uh, that's what people expect to do here. But of course, we are in Vancouver. It's not like other parts of Canada. It's often uh, cloudy here. Um, mm -hmm. But it was interesting. The, and people were actually saying today, I know it's rainy, I know it's cloudy, but I want my kids to experience the same things as other people in Canada are doing today. Mm -hmm. Because in Ontario, it's not as cloudy as here. They just want people, the parents wanted their kids to feel like they were belonging to a, a global community that was experiencing the same thing as uh, at the same time. And it's quite rare, you know, Michel, uh, it might be an experience of a lifetime to live that. The, the next partial eclipse, uh, act actually, we're gonna see it from BC as a partial eclipse, will be in, will be in 2044. So there's still 20 years to ah. wait for an event like this one today. Yeah. Um, it's, it was, that's why today is so special. I heard some dramatic music behind you there as well, just to connote yeah. the, the <laughs> event. Uh, Benoit, fantastic to check in with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Benoit Faradini, CBC reporter. We're asking you here on the open line as the totality uh, moment crosses into Canada uh, right now, 1213, asking you, are you excited about today's solar eclipse? And what is the most memorable sun event, uh, sky event that you've experienced? Our numbers are 1-800-825-5950-604-669. Pound 690 on your cell phone. And this event is unique today just in the sheer number of people in North America who are able uh, to witness it. But uh, you know, to, you can tell us about any solar eclipse that you have witnessed yourself. In fact, Bruce is joining us in Kelowna with a memory to share. Hi, Bruce. Well, hello to you. How are you? I am doing fine. I'm quite excited and in, in awe of this all, actually. Yeah, well, I'm also excited because this is the first time that I've ever gone live with you folks. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> well, let's just say I grew up with CBC. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm glad that you've called in. Um, and I wouldn't say this is as exciting, though, as that solar eclipse you experienced in 1979. Yes, well, I'm trying to think of whether it was 79 or 78. Okay. Or, I mean, uh, 1980. Uh, I'm a, you know, I'm dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me about yeah, it. Where were you? I was in, I was in university, University of Winnipeg, and of course it was all the big thing. So everybody was outside uh, on Portage Avenue, and I happened to have welding glasses, and uh, yeah, we experienced a complete total solar eclipse. Wow! And let's just say it's something that I would never forget. Wow, it sounds like it. What do you remember about it? Well, I can tell you the first thing is as it was just became um, a complete eclipse, obviously all the cars, everybody stopped driving. It got really quiet and, and the street lights came on and the, the birds stopped. Everything just went dead still. And then you just felt this really kind of eerie cold breeze pick up and blow by you yeah and it was just it was one of those moments where uh um it just it got you in your bones if you know what i mean oh my gosh very very eerie 
that I was telling a friend this morning that uh, it's sort of like I can understand like, you know, traditional, you know, way back when, when they experienced something that uh, it would be uh, very profound. Because it was almost, it was eerie. Yeah. An eerie feeling. And it just sort of uh, gives you a great appreciation for <laughs> grandfather, son, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yes. You've described yeah. it so well. Yes, it's it's actually um, a um, a once a lifetime experience to understand just how much influence that sun has on us. <laughs> I yeah, exactly. I see what you yeah. mean. It makes you again. You know, it's a cliche. It makes you realize just how small you are in the universe. Is I imagine well, you're you're thinking about the folks who have traveled to that path of totality now. Well, yeah, I'm hoping because here it uh, clouded over in Kelowna, but I'm hoping that they're going to get a full view of it over in Niagara Peninsula and stuff. Yeah. I hope so, because it sounds like a lot of people traveled there to go and check it out. It sounds like it. We're going to go there right now. In fact, Bruce, yeah. wonderful to hear from you. Thank you so much well, for sharing that. Thanks for having me on. Have a great day. You too. That's Bruce in Kelowna. And yes, hundreds of thousands of people have been expected in Niagara Falls in Ontario, and they will be experiencing a total solar eclipse at Within the minute, 1218 is a time when that is scheduled. And that will last for up to three and a half minutes. And our CBC Radio colleagues in Ontario are covering this. Let's listen into their local programming now. And Ram, Ram Raj Sharverdran is hosting. And reporter Hayden Waters is in Niagara Falls. Let's go live now to Ontario. I have astronomer Ryan Marciniak, who is with Astronomy in Action. And I also have 15-year-old big space fan, Elfie Chan with me in Grade 9 from Richmond Hill. Ryan, can you tell me what's happening right now? Because it's starting to get quite dark outside. You're, you're starting to notice it get darker by the second as uh, the final sliver of sun is disappearing as the moon covers it. We're getting darkness. I think we are very close to entering totality right now. It is basically nightfall here. This is incredible. Elfie, what are you thinking about uh, seeing this and feeling this around you right now? Um, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, just like standing down here. Um, I'm just looking up at the sky right now. It's getting darker and darker. It looks like it's kind of like, um, oh, it's almost nighttime now. That's how fast things are changing. Just a couple seconds ago, it was almost like it was sunset. Now it's dark, completely dark. Now it's nighttime. There we go. So, Ryan, can you tell me, have we entered totality now? We we must have we're at the right time and everything we're, we're if not very close it's nighttime in the middle of the day twilight on every horizon cold it's 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 hard to describe it's 3 18 in the afternoon right now and it's looking like it's about nine o'clock at the evening right now elfie have you been we can hear some cheering behind us right now elfie have you seen any eclipses before um no this is an absolute first time i've heard definitely heard about it i've grown up in a community that was always very into the sciences or very into like engineering so i always heard stories of these wonderful eclipses um and i've just never been able to experience it. it's wonderful and how are you feeling right now uh, being surrounded in this cold kind of weather all of a sudden? <laughs> um, it's very, very um, exciting. I am a bit cold, yeah. But it's definitely worth it to um, come down here. Even though the clouds are blanketing most of the view, I feel glad that I did take the chance to come down here, down to Niagara, to take a look. Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. Look at that. We're getting a brief view of, wow. of totality. <laughs> Okay. Holy smokes. What did we just see there, we Ryan? We just saw the ring of fire around the moon, the sun poking through, the corona of the sun coming around the moon on all sides for just a few short seconds. But honestly, that's all I need. I don't know about you. Okay, that's incredible. Can you describe how that looked? It's, it's like a dark hole. I, I won't call it a black hole because it's very different in astronomy, but a dark hole where the moon is, and then around it, this ring of fiery... Uh, silvery light and shining out in all directions producing the corona of the sun that's incredible uh elfie i saw your dad fist bumping over there when he saw that um what's it like to be down here with your family and being here in niagara falls as we're watching this go on at the moment um i definitely felt like we persevered um at the beginning of the day we woke up and we saw the weather forecast and we were like oh dang but then um my dad gave us a lesson last night uh he uh what we got on a home alarm got set off. He had to drive down from Niagara all the way back to Richmond Hill and back up that in that one night. And he told us to just not give up and we took our chances and now we're looking up at it and we feel awesome, you know, feels and, alive. 
This is spectacular, Ryan. What are we seeing as we go by right now? We are part of a cosmic alignment of the sun, the earth, and the moon. It makes you feel like you're part of it all, and we're just poking through the clouds, seeing that ring of fire, that totality. It's, uh, it's breathtaking. We can see some prominences of the sun, some loops of fire coming off the sun in all directions and looping back onto the sun, just poking out. And now we're back behind the clouds. You're almost losing your words there a little, I would say. Oh, I, I am, and I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find the right words because it is a breathtaking experience. Um, and I'm really glad that everybody's here to experience it. Seeing so many people interested in what's happening in the sky, for you as an astronomer, must be really something I imagine. It is. I mean, I always say I have a more intimate understanding of the cosmos, but my goal is to share that with others. And so being here at the eclipse with the planetarium, with you, with everyone I've talked to, that's the, the dream. That's the goal of all of this. All right, so we are coming uh, to the other side of totality now. So what's about to happen in the sky? Well, we're going to see things lighten up fairly quickly. We start to see a little bit of brightness uh, over in the uh, in the south and east as the as the shadow, excuse me, south and west as the shadow moves over us and looks like totality has just ended. It's brightening rapidly. Uh, the cool temperatures are starting to decline a little bit. The sky is brightening so quickly. It looks like uh, we're getting the sun back. We're going from nighttime to daytime in just a few short seconds. It's uh, the strangest thing and still fantastic. Elfie, you are filming right now on your camera. What are you seeing right now in the sky? Um, right now, yeah, so just what he said, uh, we're t starting to lighten up. It's gonna basically happen in reverse. So we're gonna have the moon go from the diamond ring defect and all the way back around. So it's kind of like seeing the stages of the moon but rather in just reverse and on the sun. So we're, so we're just gonna see the sun open up again and the things gonna get brighter. And overall, yeah, it's just gonna happen. Ryan, I hear you, you're commentating over there. You said you're shaking. At the I, I'm shaking, this is, this is so beautiful. I'm trying not to look at the sun because I wanna protect my vision, uh, but uh, the crescent sun is there. Totality has ended and now we have only to reflect on the experience and think about when we're gonna go and see it again. Oh my goodness. Okay, Elfie, coming out of that, how are you feeling? I know I've talked to people today that say moments like this are life-changing. How are you feeling at the moment? Uh, just wow. It's not much to describe what it was like. It was awesome and it was slightly terrifying. I kind of felt like uh, the sky would never open back up again, but it was honestly wonderful. It was, it was kind of terrifying, yeah. eh? Because yeah, it's kind of weird yeah. to have it go it's dark in the middle of the day. Dark in the middle of the day and then back up. All right, and now we're back to almost full light again. Yeah, it's daytime once again. Uh, the birds will start chirping once again. I don't know if you noticed how quiet it was during totality. Uh, our eyes are starting to adjust to the light once again. Our night vision had kicked in during totality, and uh, now we're getting used to the brightness of daylight once again, and uh, still awestruck after that wonderful experience. Now, the eclipse continues for another hour or so, is that correct? So what, is, what should we be doing in the next hour, especially with our eyes? Yeah, for the remainder of the eclipse, we do not want to look at the sun without proper protection. Just as you did before totality, we're going to look down, put on our solar eclipse glasses, and then look up at you the sun. You are listening there to uh, CBC's local programming in Ontario as that path of totality from the solar eclipse travels over Niagara Falls in Ontario. They have just come out on the other side of it. You were listening to Ramraj uh, Sarver Sarvergen and uh, reporter Hayden Waters, and you heard them. They were awestruck. I mean, almost losing their words there at just how amazing it was. It was completely dark during that moment of totality. I see uh, in the coverage now, you know, couples hugging and kissing, just having this uh, experience together. And now, it's daylight once again um, after the moon passed um, in front of completely in front of the sun, completely blocking its light. That, uh, that what we just saw, if you're watching us on our uh, live stream, was a marriage proposal. There it is right there. I see um, a man in a brown jacket kneeling on one knee and uh it looks like he is proposing to someone and now they're sharing a kiss together. So that's how momentous this occasion is that people are actually uh, having life events um, under this solar eclipse. So we're asking you if you're excited for today's solar eclipse event. Now, this is actually quite uh, unusual as well. Very rare, this particular one, because while eclipses happen frequently, 
total solar eclipses might only be visible in a region once every several decades, sometimes more than 100 years. And that's what makes it so unusual. Asking you, are you excited? What's the most memorable sky event you have witnessed? Our numbers are 1-800-825-5950. 604-669-3733, pound 690 on your cell phone. At 12.26 our time, in just uh, in a few seconds, that path of totality will hit Montreal. And then at 12.28, mont Megantic in Quebec. And we will go there live once again. But first, let's go to Matt in Vancouver. Hi, Matt. Hi, thanks for having me. Sure. What's the most memorable uh, you know, a- astronomical event you've witnessed? Uh, I was living in the West End in Vancouver in 1995, and I heard that the space shuttle would be making an appearance in the nighttime sky at about 4.15 in the morning. Uh So I went up onto the roof of the building I was in, and right on cue, I could see from over Bowen Island to the North Shore Mountains and way over up the valley, there was by far the biggest looking star, but it was yellow, and it crossed the entire sky, leaving a trail of smoke, moving at what I was told at that point in time was 9,000 miles an hour. Whoa. And it was on its way to Florida to land, and I got up. There was nobody else in any of the neighboring buildings. It was dead quiet, and it left an entire trail of smoke across the entire sky. You could see it. It was like a regular star, but 10 times as bigger. What time was this of the day? 15 in the morning. (laughs) 15 in the morning back in 1995 sometime. Oh my goodness. And you remember it, it sounds like to the minute. It was, it was so spectacular because there was like six or seven astronauts on it and they were moving so fast oh. right in front of my eyes from in one entire horizon to the next horizon from west heading east. It was incredible. It sounds like it. And it sounds like obviously something you, uh, you remember. And um, what, what was special about it for you? It just kind of showed where humanity has gone and and honestly at that point it was kind of like flat earthers were were starting up and I was like how could this be anything other than something so spectacular like going outside of our uh, footprint on the earth and going out into space it it was mind-blowing I'll never forget it oh what a wonderful uh, memory to share with us Matt thank you so much thank you have a great day you too Matt in Vancouver let's head now to Quebec where they are experiencing a total total eclipse Alison Northcott is there at the observatory at the Mont Megantic National Park let's go live to CBC News Network yeah I think you can hear it for yourself I'm just going to take a minute to let you just have a listen So we are in totality now, and uh, people, you know, gasping almost, covering their mouths, just looking up with a real feeling of, of awe and pleasure. Allison, are, are you in a position to, to go and talk to anybody nearby to see what the reaction is from the family? I'm going to just find there, someone here who I was going to speak with before okay. he's down here. Perfect. How are you doing? We spoke earlier, and I just want to hear from you. Um, I feel really, I feel really grateful for seeing this because it's really rare, and I, f- I feel special because we've dr- we've been driving for six hours to get here, and it's really spectacular. Describe for me what you're looking at right now. We're looking at, at a ring of light that's that's uh, been there's a light of the sun that's that's being hidden by the by the moon. So. And it changed so quickly, the light. Yeah. Yeah, it is incredible. Why did you not know to see this? I think it's part of the science that I love ex- um, exploring. And, uh, and that is the moment in Mont Megantic, Quebec.
uh, when the total eclipse hovered over there, um, starting at 1228. And uh, as you heard Alison Northcott speaking with people um, in uh, Montmagantique National Park, having traveled <laughs> hours and hours to get there in order to witness the solar eclipse. This is BC Today here on CBC. I'm Michelle Elliott. Really glad to be with you this afternoon. And this is the hour when that uh, path of totality travels over Canada. It will leave Canada in uh, about 15 minutes at 1246. It's going to head over to Fredericton at 12. 34. And so lots more coverage coming up. We're going to hear from a young uh, student, a grade five student who actually went himself to um, Cleveland, Ohio with his dad in order to experience the moment of totality. We'll hear from them. They have just experienced it about 15 minutes ago. We'll check in with them and we continue to take your calls asking you how excited you are for the solar eclipse and what is the most memorable sky event you have experienced. Right now it's 1231 and time for for the CBC News Update with Robert Zimmerman. Good afternoon. The search continues for a young man whose empty kayak was found off West Vancouver Island. 21-year-old Alan du Duarte de Rosa was last seen Friday while departing from the west side of Tassus Inlet. His kayak was recovered near Tassus Narrows. Two teenage boys are dead and a young man seriously injured after a crash near Chetwin. The incident happened just after midnight yesterday. A 19 and 15 year old in one vehicle were killed while the 21 year old driver of a pickup has life-threatening injuries. And as we've been seeing on the show, parts of southern Ontario and Quebec were completely in the dark in the last few minutes as the moon momentarily blocked the sun. Thousands of people have been gathering to watch the solar eclipse around North America. Its path of totality will pass through parts of Ontario, Quebec and Atlantic Canada before exiting North America in about 15 minutes. And now the forecast rainfall warnings are in place for North and West Vancouver and snowfall warnings are in effect for sections of the Coquihalla and the Trans-Canada. Elsewhere on the North Coast, periods of rain this afternoon with a high of 5, highs to 11 with a mix of sun and cloud in the peace. In the central interior, showers with a high of 8 degrees, highs to 11 with increasing cloudiness in the Kootenays. In the southern interior, a chance of showers with a high of 12. And for Metro Vancouver, Greater Victoria and the Fraser Valley, more rain this afternoon with highs around 10 degrees. That's your CBC News update from Vancouver. I don't think you can see me right now, but I do have my eclipse glasses on. Do you? That's uh, a good look. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a good look. And it, they really work because I couldn't see a thing as I had them on. So if you happen to be uh, witnessing an eclipse, this is what's needed. Mandatory for safety. Do not trumpet. Yes. Do not. Um, it's pretty cool. It I'm is. I'm looking at it on TV. Absolutely. It's pretty exciting. I know. I saw with that moment, the first one in Mexico, and I really... It, something did come over me, I have to say. I can imagine when you're actually there. Yeah, it must be super. Super, yeah. Um, we're going to hear from more people, Rob. This is one of those things people remember, so we're going to keep talking to them. I have a couple emails here, actually. Do you want me to read them to you? Sure. Uh, Chris wrote us, My most memorable sky event was in 1984. I was born and raised in Saskatchewan, and this was a Northern Lights show. Have you ever seen the Northern Lights, Rob? I have not. No. Uh, Gloria just saw them. She was in Iceland. In ice, of course yeah. she did. What a place to yeah, see it, too. Yeah, she said it was awesome. It's a dream of mine, actually. And so and so, uh, Chris continues, the entire sky was lit up with all the color, colors imag imaginable dancing all across the sky. And the most incredible part of this was how noisy it was the entire time, clinking, tinkling like delicate glass breaking and sometimes ice shifting. It was mind-blowing. Oh, my goodness, what a mm -hmm. show. And Lisa wrote us about um, that solar eclipse uh, in the late 70s in Winnipeg. And she writes, we had a caller earlier about it too, Bruce. But Lisa writes, I remember it so clearly. It went so quiet and darker, and the birds totally stopped singing. I'm so glad I experienced it. Some birds also went a bit wonky. I heard that as well. Uh, an entomologist speaking this morning on our, our northern show saying the animals are going to, you know, insects might behave differently because of the change. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. It sure is. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, the, the, the solar <laughs> show, I, <will>. I mean. <laughs> and our show too, of course. <laughs> Rob, thank you. See you.
<laughs> Rob Zimmerman in the CBC Vancouver newsroom. And welcome back. You're with BC Today here on CBC. We are tracking the solar eclipse and that path of totality tra traveling across eastern Canada. And right now at 1234, it is scheduled to be above Fredericton, New Brunswick. And then it heads over to PEI and then Gander, Newfoundland, ending at 12. 46 when it does leave Canada and this solar eclipse is unique uh, in that the the number of people that are a able to see it today um, is infrequent the last total eclipse was in 1925 in Hamilton the next one will not be until 2144 and uh, in a few minutes actually we'll be joined by a lecturer in physics at Simon Fraser University to explain much more of it scientifically to you and me. Uh, we're asking you though, what is your most memorable sky event as well? 1-800-825-5950-604-669-3733, pound 690 on your cell phone. And uh, Jane is calling us now in Kamloops. Hello, Jane. Hello. Thanks for calling. And so tell me about what, you, what event you recall. Well, I've been, in 1979, I was a student in Camrose. Alberta and I when I've been reading about it it said it wasn't a total eclipse but it sure seemed like it I was walking through campus and it, it just all went black it wasn't a big deal back then like I don't remember a whole bunch of energy put into telling everybody about it mm. we weren't looking special glasses but it was just amazing like every time I hear about eclipses I get that same feeling it got cold it got dark and then and and windy for sure Wow, that is what I've heard, right? People in Niagara were, were describing it that way too, that it suddenly got mm -hmm. colder and darker. Thank you so much, Jane. You're welcome. Have a nice day. You too. Trace is next in Vancouver now. Trace, are you excited about today's solar eclipse? Yes, yes, very excited. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but I sort of constantly live in a state of awe because I'm just amazed at the fact that there was a big bang and that all of the things energy and particles um come from that origin yeah i've i've heard so many things today you know just seeing how realizing how small we are and in, in the the realm of things and in the long history of things but also the the fact that you're part of this global event that's happening right now um and and so when you think about it um about how the universe evolved and uh, you know starting with a big bang what what are the feelings that run through you well i'll just uh give you one example of the sort of uh wonder of it um 14 billion years ago when the hot dense speck that was our universe quickly expanded all of the matter and antimatter that existed should have annihilated mm. and left us nothing but energy. Mm. And yet a small amount of matter survived. Mm. And that matter is our sun and our planet and us. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for that view of things, Trace. Nice to hear from you. Enjoy the rest of this event, okay? Thank you. Take care. That's Trace in Vancouver. Yeah, we've heard the words magical, multi-sensory, ways of describing today's solar eclipse. Well, we're joined now by a father and son from Vancouver who have traveled to Cleveland, Ohio, over which the path of totality uh, hovered over at 1213, um, just under half an hour ago. And 11-year-old Julian Falcon and his father, Aaron Malkin, join us now from Cleveland. Hello there. Hi. Thanks so much for joining us. Can you describe where you are right now, Aaron? We are. She said Aaron. Oh, right. We're, <laughs> we're in a park, an elementary school in Cleveland Heights in Cleveland, Ohio. And there are families around, kids playing in the playground, people with telescopes, uh, people sitting on uh, lounge chairs. Uh, Aaron, you go ahead. You tell me what, what, what your morning was like. What happened at 12.13, uh, our time? Oh, at 12.13, your time. I think that's when the totality began. Yes, go ahead, Julian. Uh, How did you feel? Go, go for it, man. So it was so amazing. Like, it was somewhat bright, and then flicking a switch, it was basically nighttime. Wow. And... The sun, or, well, the moon, I guess, 
had a beautiful, like, uh, halo, I guess, around it. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, it was so beautiful. In, in that moment, we could take off our eclipse glasses and look with our naked eyes, which yeah. allowed us to see so much more because the eclipse glasses blocks like a thousand times of, or a thousand less brightness. Yeah. So to take the glasses off and see uh, the, the moon blocking the sun, it was, I would say it was so beautiful. Wow. Uh, and and the, the energy in the area, people were cheering and whistling and it was, uh, there was so much, like Hi, kind of deep-rooted excitement. It was very, uh, it was very, it just. <laughs> I can <laughs> was, see, I can sense that you're still kind of recovering a little bit from from the mo that, that event and the significance of it. I, well, yeah, it was maybe the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen or the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Why did you want I to understand now? Go ahead, Aaron. Sorry? Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, I understand. I, I, we're doing an interview right now. Thanks. Um, I understand now what I read in, in the newspaper, in the news about people following total eclipses. Uh, it, it was, I think, a little transformational. I, I have never seen anything that extraordinary, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was, it was as, it was more bright, it was more bright and beautiful and it, it was than any photo, any, any explanation or. We couldn't feel that way from a description. No. Yeah. <laughs> Can Julian, why did you want to travel there? Well, I have seen a, I, I think I've seen a partial solar uh, solar eclipse before. Mm -hmm. But it was nothing like this. Yeah. It, the, the, the path of totality is is quite unique in, yeah. in that you can just look without uh, without the eclipse glasses right. uh, and, and see that 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 halo around the moon uh, and and uh, I mean, pardon me, yeah. Aaron. What's it like being there with Julian, as uh, you know, father and son, witnessing this? Well, incidentally, um, my sister uh, told us about the eclipse in Cleveland. She lives an eight-hour drive from here, and I have uh, some other family here. So it has become like a family reunion slash complete solar eclipse viewing <laughs> uh, thing together. Uh, so. Julie and I have been excited uh, in anticipation of this. And now that it has happened, I mean, right now it's still a partial eclipse. We're in the penumbra. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll get back to that after this interview. But it's, uh, it, it's been an extraordinary experience that we get to have together. Yeah. Yeah. Julian, what are you going to tell your friends when you go back to school? That I had an amazing time viewing a solar eclipse for well a, a total solar eclipse for the first time wow. and, and probably the last time unless we go to iceland spain portugal or greenland in 2027 wait that are you saying <laughs> <laughs> they happen about every 18 months they happen about every 18 months yeah but the earth is mostly water so i thought someone said they happened like every I thought someone said the next one was going to happen at uh, 21. Oh, the next one in somewhere in Canada, I think. Uh, that's what they said. That's yeah, on right. Show. Yeah, 2144. Oh. Um, I just have to note, you mentioned your your glasses, but you're wearing um, what looks like tinfoil hats on your heads. Uh, <laughs> and Aaron is laughing. From, to protect us from the uh, the aliens when they come out at the path, at when totality. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we have a sense of humor in this family. Yes. I'm getting that vibe. I'm getting that vibe and a sense of adventure and curiosity. Um, enjoy uh, the penumbra. Enjoy your reunion <laughs> and all of it. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. Thanks for tuning us in. It was amazing. <laughs> That's a great five student, Julian Falcon, and his father, Aaron Malkin. Uh, they are from Vancouver. They traveled to Cleveland, Ohio, 
uh, partly for a family reunion, but really to see this solar eclipse. And he said it was an amazing experience to witness a total solar eclipse. Um, we're asking you for your own experiences. Um, what is the most memorable sun solar event, sky event that you have experienced? And are you excited for today? In about 30 seconds is when we are expecting the path of totality to leave Canada in 15 seconds at 1246. And so all the Canadian residents who were in Niagara and Kingston, Montreal, Momagantic, Fredericton, Summerside, PEI, Gander, Newfoundland, all experience that path of totality. What a moment it was as well. Uh, John is joining us now from Nanaimo to share an experience about an astronomical event. Hello, John. Hello. Uh, tell us about what you've experienced. Well, this was back in 1969. I think it was January or February. I was off the west coast of Mexico on a freighter and uh, had a, just a spectacular meteorite. Came in far and away the brightest one I've ever seen, and I've seen quite a number. Mm. This was just absolutely stunning, illuminating the entire sky. And a long time later, I heard it was named the uh, Pueblo de Allende meteorite, and uh, pieces of it were located and salvaged by scientists, and it was actually scientifically a very rewarding meteorite. And have you, um, they found pieces of the meteorite once it uh, hit Earth. Are they, you know, anywhere to, to view or anything like that? Um, I think it was the uh, University of Texas that did most of the um, salvage work on pieces. Mm. I'm sure they're in an institution somewhere, either in the States or, uh, or Mexico. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff, John. Thank you so much. I'll give you another one while I'm at sure. it. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, in 1962, I was in the middle of the uh, Indian Ocean in about November or December, wow. and I saw a lunar rainbow. I've seen lots of halos around the moon. Uh, <sighs> that's the only time in my life I've ever seen a lunar rainbow. What is a lunar rainbow? Well, a rainbow is caused by the sun shining on rain. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. The I lunar see. rainbow at night, it's exactly the same thing, but it's from the light of the moon. There were a couple of nights in the Indian Ocean. It was the brightest... Uh, nights and the most star littered skies I've ever seen in my life. Oh. But we had rain squalls, and that was when I saw the, ra the rainbows, two nights in a row, actually. What an experience. I'm sure it was something else to be in the middle of the ocean like that, the Indian oh, it Ocean. It was fabulous. Yeah. John, thank you for sharing those two memories with us. You're welcome. Take care. Uh, we're at taking your calls, asking you as well, uh, were you excited about today's solar eclipse? Uh, what did you do? Um, do you know anyone who traveled to go witness it? And let us know too what your own favorite memories are, your most memorable sky events that you've experienced. Well, joining me now is Joanna Wu, who's a lecturer in the Department of Physics at Simon Fraser University. And uh, she's just wrapped up an eclipse event at the Trottier Observatory. Hello, Professor Wu. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. How did it go? Yeah, I was so amazed, even in the rain. People braved the rain. When I uh, last checked, there were almost 200 people that had shown up. So it was, uh, people were really excited about it. And we were giving away solar glasses as well. And I think that people knew that. So they wanted to come and have a souvenir, even if, if we couldn't see anything here. <laughs> right. Were you live streaming it at all? Or what could people see there? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we had in, in the dome of the observatory, we had a stream of the NASA feed. So NASA was streaming the view from Mexico and then Texas and then all along the path of totality all the way up to, I'm not sure that they, I left before they got to Canada, um, but, uh, I, but they were streaming it from several different places. And because the shadow takes time to move across the continent, then we got to experience totality several different times in different cities, That's at right. least on, on the monitor. Yeah. Well, we, you know, you're actually the first expert we're speaking to. We've heard so many stories and, and eyewitness accounts. But for, you know, can you explain exactly what is happening today? What are we witnessing and, and how significant is it? Yes, so a solar eclipse is when the moon comes between Earth and the sun. So the moon actually casts a shadow on the planet. So that ha doesn't happen very often because the orbit of the moon is not quite aligned with the orbit of the Earth going around the sun. So it's actually off by about five degrees, which is more than enough that we don't get it every single month. But we get it once every between one and two years. 
uh, we do get a solar eclipse somewhere on the planet. And it's very rare because the shadow of the moon is quite small. Now, you might wonder why is it small? Because the, the moon is way bigger than 100 miles. So why is it that the shadow is, is mm -hmm. really small? The reason, the reason is because if you've ever noticed on a sunny day, if you put your hand out and you see the shadow of your hand, and if you're close to the ground, then you'll see that the outline of your shadow is quite uh, solid, like it's really a sharp, a sharp outline. But if you lift your hand away from the ground, you'll notice that the outline becomes fuzzier and fuzzier mm. and the dark part of your shadow gets smaller and smaller. Well, the moon is so far from the earth that it's the dark part of the shadow, which we call the umbra, is quite small, whereas the fuzzy part of the shadow, which we call the penumbra, is quite large. So if you ha happen to stand in the fuzzy part of the shadow, you will get a partial eclipse. But if you're standing in the dark part of the shadow, the umbra, then you are lucky enough to see the uh, total solar eclipse. And when we see that sort of halo, you know, I saw that little sliver of red. Um, what am I actually looking at? A sliver of red. So when the moon goes uh, in front of the sun, but doesn't qu quite completely block the sun, is that is that what you're referring yes, to? Yes, yeah. And I also, um, you know, I've been reading up about the Bailey's beads, which are caused by the, the uneven surface of the moon. What exactly is that? That's right, because the surface of the moon is not um, even. It's not perfectly smooth. It's got a lot of craters and little mountains. And when sunlight is blocked by most of the moon, but some slip through the little valleys that come towards us, then we see these Bailey's beads or we see uh, what's called uh, the diamond ring effect when the moon is just about to cover the sun and there's only one valley left with a little bit of light coming through. Mm. That's called diamond ring. And it's really very beautiful, but you still shouldn't look at that with your naked eye. You need protection all the way until totality. Okay. And in terms of rarity, I'm going to go to a caller here actually who has a question for you, but in terms of rarity, they do happen relatively frequently, but it's more our ability to, to witness one. Is that right? That's right. That's so they do happen every between one and two years somewhere on the planet, but where it is on the planet, it's not going to be in your city uh, very that frequently. So uh, <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of people who want to see an eclipse will fly to those places. Uh, they'll, we can predict when the next ones are going to happen and where. And so, in fact, the next total solar eclipse will be over Greenland and Spain, and those are great places to visit. So uh, if you want to see, if you missed this one and you want to see it, then start planning. It'll be in two years. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think we had a father and son on who were going to start planning their next vacation. Uh, Donald is calling from Dawson Creek with a question for uh, Professor Joanna Wu. Hi, Donald. Hello. Um, yeah, I was just wondering how fast does the actual uh, total eclipse move as it crosses? Because it's so quick that it crossed Canada. And does that change with other eclipses or do they move at the same speed the way that the eclipses move? That's a great question. I don't remember the exact number of how fast they're going, but they are going very fast. They're faster than a plane can travel, actually. So there, in fact, there was a plane that took off from Houston and tried to follow the shadow of the moon. And it could it could follow as long as it could follow the shadow so that the people on board could see the shadow for a few minutes longer than everyone else on the ground. So you can oh. that can give you an idea that the shadow of the moon actually goes quite a bit faster than our planes can. Um, and uh, let's see, your other question was. Uh, if it uh, changes during other eclipses or it always moves oh, okay. the same. It's roughly the same. It's, it's going to be, it's not going to be exactly the same for every eclipse because the angle of the moon is, might be slightly different. The moon orbits the earth at a, it's not quite a perfect circle. It actually is slightly oval shaped. So then uh, there are certain parts of its orbit where it moves a little faster and certain parts where it's a little slower. And depending on the alignment of the earth, moon and sun, um, you can move, the shadow might move a little bit faster or slower, but it's normally uh, roughly the same amount. You, you don't normally get uh, an eclipse that lasts longer than um, a few minutes, basically four to six minutes is the maximum. Really great question, Donald. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Keith is next now in Vancouver with a memory to share of uh, a, a memorable sky event. Hi, Keith. Hello there. Yeah. Um, yes, this was in March of 1997, and this was in Vancouver. And um, it was a convergence at the same time in the evening of the hale bopp Comet. Uh -huh. I think that's the pronunciation. I, I remember this. And a partial um, eclipse of the moon. 
and you could look up and see both with the naked eye um, in the same zone. And it was um, one of those moments of wonder. Where were you? Um, I was in uh, the Strathcona neighborhood in the park. Yeah. And we'd had about three weeks of rain before that, and it was crystal clear sky. Oh, wow. The weather uh, weather cleared up just for that. And were you with other people at the time or by yourself? Uh, yes, I was with a whole bunch of other people on our way to a party. Uh-huh. And everybody and stopped, did they? you could see they? the tail of the comet. I mean, it was spectacular. That's awesome. Keith, thank you very much. Thank you. I saw Professor uh, Wu nodding there as um, as you were listening to Keith. Do you recall that? I don't remember the hail bop with the partial eclipse. Mm. I, I was quite young at the time, but I do remember hail bop. Uh, and it was, I believe that was the first comet that I'd ever seen. And it was amazing. You could see it. I think I had to look through binoculars to find it. But when I had found it, it was just a moment of like, wow, I've seen my first comet, you know? <laughs> so um, yeah, they're really amazing. That is really cool. You know, I'm just looking at photos and just, yes, to see the tail of it. I, that is just... I mean, you can't miss it. You're, you're um, really, it, it, it's a moment of awe to be able to see something like that. I can imagine being at a park and seeing that. That's pretty awesome. Keith, thank you very much. And for you, um, Joanna, what, what is the most, um, I guess, fascinating uh, aspect of today's solar eclipse? Well, one thing, so we had just spoken about comets. I don't know if anybody has reported yet seeing uh, the sighting of a comet. There is a comet in the skies these days that is bright enough to see with the naked eye. Uh, it's We could see it here in Vancouver a couple of weeks ago. Now it's getting too close to the, uh, the sunset so that the sunset sky is too bright to see it. Uh, but people south of the border could see it still for a little while longer. But this comet was predicted to be bright enough to see during a solar eclipse, which is incredibly rare to see a comet during a solar eclipse, or during a total solar eclipse. Wow. So it, I, I always advise people that I knew who were going to see the eclipse. I said, look, it's, it's your first time. Don't bother trying to look for the comet because you only have like a minute or two to look at the beautiful spectacle of the, the sun, the sun's atmosphere. Uh, but for experienced people, I, I, there was one person that I knew that was going who had seen several solar eclipses. So I told them, look, look for the comet. And I, I don't I don't have a report yet if anybody has seen it. <laughs> so I, I hope somebody has seen it. That would be really cool. You've got a big smile on your face as you talk about that. I mean, this is really your passion. I can tell 